So now that we've established some strong background information in terms of chromosomal inheritance, specifically in regards to the chromosome theory of inheritance and the idea that Bovary and Thomas and Morgan, very important guys in sort of establishing the background necessary for understanding this lecture. So now that we've got a good grasp of background knowledge, I think it's important to now look at Thomas Hunt Morgan, continue our look at him because I told you he's very important and I'm going to show you why. Thomas Hunt Morgan is going to be the title of our next, our title of our next flowchart and specifically what we're going to be doing now is looking at exactly what Thomas Hunt Morgan did in his lab. So what we can imagine right now is the fact that Thomas Hunt Morgan looked at the idea that was the following. There are for some reason or another, correlating, uh, he was able to look at correlating, he was able to establish, excuse me, the idea that correlating uh, the behavior of genes, alleles, with behavior of chromosome we'll just say chromo pair. So, what does this mean? Specifically, I want you to understand something. What Thomas Hunt Morgan did was that he looked at how the genes alleles, like, let's say, which was this? What was this representing? This represented white eyes, and this represented red eyes. How alleles like this behaved in terms of the chromosomal pair in which they're found. He was able to basically state that the behavior, we can write this on the side here, of chromosomes and genes was an intimate relationship. Genes are very much related and to chromosomes and vice versa. Now, we're going to be able to prove this by looking at some of Thomas Hunt Morgan's experiments. So I'm going to try to prove to you that the behavior of genes and their alleles really, really correlates with the behavior of how chromosomal pairs act. Now, what you start, should start to be thinking about is the idea that a chromosomal pair separates and that alleles represent different forms of genetic traits and characters. Start thinking of all these things we've been establishing because once again, this is a cumulative subject that builds upon prior knowledge. Let's work off of our prior knowledge to build this fact right here. So what I'm going to tell you is what Mendel, or what Thomas Hunt Morgan excuse me, did. We're going to first have a parent generation on the side called P. And in this parent generation, we're going to have males that are all red eyes. That all have, let's say actually females. Females all have red eyes. This is the first cross that, men, that Morgan did. Okay, Let's imagine this. He crossed these guys with their sort of opposite. White eyes, but specifically not females of course, but males. This is the donation for female. This is the donation for male. So we've crossed all a red-eyed female with a white-eyed male in our parent generation. What's next after parent generation? Of course, an F1. Because look, Thomas Hunt Morgan is working off of what Mendel did, but he's going to see something a little different than what Mendel saw. So what he got was the following. In the F1, all offspring, okay, all offspring, that means all of the fruit flies. Remember, this is all fruit flies. All offspring with red eyes. Okay? This is what he saw. He saw all offspring with red eyes. So you can ask yourself the question, you should start to be thinking of this, is red, the red eye color trait, dominant or greater than the white eyed color trait? It sure looks like it based off of this first parent cross and F1 results. All offspring were born with red eyes, so the red eyes must be dominant to the white eyes. So what we're going to do in the F1 is a very simple cross again of red eye females, because that's what we got, so red eye females, crossed with what would the males be? What did I just say? All offspring with red eyes. So that means that all the males that were the result of this initial parent cross are going to have, not white, excuse me, red eyes, okay? Because we think red is dominant to white. 
And so these males all have red eyes, and this is our F1 cross. Don't forget that. We've done a parent cross. Now we've established this fact in our F1. This is just what happened. So I'm going to cross two individuals, two individuals of different um, genders, and see what happens. So after this cross, I'm going to get what? An F2, of course. And in this F2 generation, what I see, very expectedly at least, is a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. Specifically, the phenotypic ratio um, is seen in the sense that we have three red-eyed individuals and one, re one white-eyed individual. So this, is, this was seen in Mendel's uh, situation, right? He crossed, uh, let's say, a, a green plant with a yellow plant, and he saw all green at first, and then he crossed uh, two of those green individuals, and he ended up with one yellow. He was like, oh, that's really weird. How did a yellow show up? And we understood that there was recessive and dominant alleles at play. Things were masking others. But here's the weird part in terms of Thomas Hunt Morgan, what he saw. He saw a 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio, so he's like, okay, this definitely follows Mendel's laws. But what he noticed over and over and over again was that in this 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio, he saw, but there was one caveat. All white eyes, anybody with white eyes, white eyes flies, let's say, all white eyed flies were always, always, always male. This is weird. This is really, really weird. Because you would think that, you know, it's a 50 50 shot of a white eyed thing, white eyed fly being female or male because that's how genetics works that's how male and female works you don't have to understand anything beyond that but he saw the phenotypic ratio that Mendel expected but for some reason he kept on seeing this one remember the one represents the white eyed trait as always always male fruit fly this is very interesting so what we can do in terms of this establishment is sort of put some more specific details to this cross and I'm going to just draw a line here so that we have a real sort of genetic cross about to happen. So I'm going to do this in terms of the actual, um, let's say, genetic notation that you should understand. And I'm just going to do it right now and just follow along with me. So there is a parent generation. I'm going to start over. And instead of just putting, you know, words and denote, uh, words and like, you know, these weird symbols like this, I'm going to make it much clearer and much more simple. I have a red-eyed female. You know how I'm going to denote red-eyed female? I'm going to put X with a W plus and an X with a W plus. Why XX? Because females are always XX. Just understand that for right now. This is something that you'll understand for, uh, that you just need a little bit of background knowledge. Um, so let me just mention something that I forgot to mention over here. Um, let's just write down that this is weird, okay? Weird. And just establish something uh, right here that XX and XY. XX means you're female, and XY means you're male. So I'm going to do exactly what was done before, but I'm going to put some notation, some nice genetic notation. So our parent generation, red eyes, females. This is what I just did. A female, XX, with red eyes. Why is it W+, plus? why not R? Because we established that red eyes are the wild type trait. The wild type trait is shown in the females in a purebred form. W+, plus, W+, plus, no white eyes possible in this female. This is crossed with what? A white-eyed male. That is a mutant trait. So I'm going to do X, but this time I'm going to do W. And what are males? X and Y. Don't put anything near the Y yet. You don't need to. The Y doesn't carry this trait of eye color. It just doesn't. The Y only carries, let's say, maleness. XX means female. XY means male. I'm assuming that there's something to do with maleness and femaleness in terms of this trait. That's why I'm doing XX and XY and not just W plus, W plus, and W. So now I've established this an original parent cross. What's going to happen now? I'm going to do this cross and I'm going to end up with an F1 generation. That F1 generation is going to be a bunch of these guys. All of them are going to have this. They're going to all be um, either female or male. So let me do the male side over here. But what did I say? All offspring with red eyes. So I've done red eyes here because look, this offspring, this dad is definitely going to donate his W allele with this um, female, let's say, this, this mother. And this is the combination that shows here. We'll do a Punnett square in our next video. And then what we're going to see here actually 
is a red-eyed male. And that red-eyed male is going to have to have to be W plus, right? Because everybody has red eyes. So I'm going to cross these two. This female and male, XW plus Y, XW plus XW. And what am I going to, let's just remind ourselves it's supposed to be all red eyes. What am I going to achieve in our F2? This is where the weirdness started showing up. In the F2, what happens is, and you have to do this Punnett square on your own. I highly suggest doing this Punnett square. You're going to get these results, and it's very interesting. You're going to get XW plus, XW plus. That means that you're going to get one female with red eyes. So I'll just write down red underneath. Then you're going to get another female, because it's 50-50. There's going to be four offspring possible. You're going to get another female that's just a carrier, XW plus and XW. Still red eyes, of course. Then you're going to get a male that's going to be XW plus and Y. This is going to be what? Red eyes. Uh, red eyes, yes. Red, red eyes, of course, because of W plus, W plus, W plus. And then you get the weird guy. You get the XW white eyed trait Y. And this is a white eyed male, white eyed individual. Focus on this guy. Now, I know I'm not explaining much as to why this happened, but we're going to get into that. Right now, just know that this was the weird gen genotypic result that was seen to explain this. The fact that only, only the white-eyed flies in the F2 cross results were male. Always, always, always male. So, what does this all mean? What I'm going to tell you are uh, some very basic conclusions out of this. Now, I don't have much room, but I'm going to try to squeeze those conclusions right here. So there are some conclusions you should walk away with on this. I haven't explained much of the genetics behind this yet, because you'll get that later on in this lecture, but just understand what Thomas Hunt Morgan did. And these conclusions are important. What he noticed and concluded was that a specific gene, a specific gene, imagine eye color gene, is always carried on specific what? What would a gene be carried on? What did Thomas Hunt Morgan establish? Gene chromosomal pair behavior relationship correlates, of course. So the specific gene is always carried on specific chromosome. That is our behavior correlating. There's a correlating behavior just like I established initially. And lastly, in terms of conclusions, what we notice is that there are, in fact, genes on the sex chromosomes, XX and XY in fruit flies, that give unique, and this is very important, I've established this before, but they give unique non-Mendelian, non, I'm just going to write men, let's write men right there, non-Mendelian inheritance patterns. We're going to look at this in much greater detail as we move forward, but I want you on your own to go back and do these Punnett squares, specifically do this Punnett square. I want you to do this Punnett square. You're going to get these results that I see here. I'm going to do one a little bit later on in this lecture series, but I want you to do this. Get these results and notice that always, for some reason, the white eyed trait always ends up with the male. The mutant trait always ends up with the male. This is weird. This is non-Mendelian. This is an inheritance pattern Mendel never saw. So overall, we've established that Thomas Hunt Morgan was able to show the correlating behavior of genes and their specific chromosome pair as established by this conclusion. And then we were able to establish the idea of sex chromosomes having some weird, unique non-Mendelian inheritance patterns.